In this video, I want to give an overview of the sensory functions of the nervous system. The nervous system can sense many aspects of the body and the environment. Each type of stimulus that can be sensed is detected by some type of receptor. And here I've represented that with this letter R in this particular part of the body. Most types of sensory information is transmitted from the periphery of the body to the central nervous system via afferent axons in the peripheral nervous system. So for most senses, that information is going to travel along these afferent axons, bringing information into the central nervous system. Vision occurs through the eyes. Audition or hearing occurs through the ears. There's a sense from the inner ear called vestibular sense, which involves head movements and the direction of gravity. Olfaction or smell occurs through the nose, and gustation or taste occurs mostly through the mouth. There are multiple senses of the body collectively called somatosensation. These include the senses of touch, position of body parts, which can also be called proprioception, senses of vibration, pain, temperature, and others. These somatosensory stimuli are detected by receptors in the skin and deep tissues of the body. Similar types of stimuli can be sensed in what are called viscera, such as organs and blood vessels, and this is called viscerosensation. There is another classification system for neurons carrying these types of information that I generally prefer not to use, but I'll just mention them here so you know these terms. And with this system, the, the following terms are used. Special somatic afferent, refers to vision, audition, and vestibular senses. Special visceral afferent refers to olfaction and gustation. General somatic afferent refers to somatosensation. And general visceral afferent refers to viscerosensation. Most types of sensory information travel through chains of neurons to sensory areas of the cerebral cortex for conscious perception. And this again is the cerebral cortex, this outer layer of neurons on the top part of the brain, the cerebrum. There are other types of sensory information that we often call unconscious because they are not consciously perceived. These tend to travel to parts of the central nervous system other than the cerebral cortex to contribute to their functions. For each sensory modality, or a type of sense, that is perceived, there is an area of the cerebral cortex called primary sensory cortex and areas of cortex called association sensory cortices. So for example, for somatosensation, this area is a primary somatosensory cortex, and then there are areas such as these areas that are association somato somatosensory cortices. A primary sensory cortex is necessary to perceive simpler or more basic aspects of that type of stimulus. Association sensory cortices are necessary to perceive more complex aspects of that type of stimulus or to combine different sensory modalities for higher level perceptions. The term gnosis is used for the ability to perceive additional information about stimuli beyond the primary sensory modalities. And gnosis occurs in these association sensory cortices. Dysfunction of these cortices may cause one or more types of agnosia which is abnormal gnosis. For example, there is a type of visual agnosia called prosopagnosia, which is an inability to visually recognize familiar faces, despite being able to perceive more basic visual information, such as shape or color. Anosognosia is a term for a common agnosia, involving an inability to perceive neurological deficits or loss of neural functions, such as weakness or sensory loss. Anosognosia often occurs with lesions of association cortex in the parietal lobe of the right cerebral hemisphere. Here we're looking at the left, but on the other side. These are just a few examples of agnosia, and we'll get into lots more later.